Right, today's video is going to be on refilling one of these, one of the Chinese filters, and it's just about refilling filters in general. If it works for this, it will work for any filter. And here, I have a bag of activated charcoal. As you can see there, act <laughs> as you can see there, activated charcoal. So, this is the fish tank filter filler stuff. I have no idea how well it will work in one of these, but it's the principle I want to see if it works. Because this Chinese one is technically expired and they hadn't got any plugs on it when it came in the parcel, so obviously it had been exposed to the air. This is in a sealed bag. So what I want to do is open up the filter, pour out what's in there, replace it with this stuff, and then we'll see if it works. So I'm just going to empty this, and then um, you can watch me fill it up on camera, just to show you again what's in here. Unscrew this bit, take all the little bits out so it doesn't spill it everywhere. And there you go, there's your filter full of charcoal granules. So I'm just going to pour those into a bin and then I'll be back to refill the filter with the other stuff. Right, let's now reverse build the filter. So at the back of the filter you've just got this plastic thing you can take out. Then there's one of these particle pads and a sponge. So it goes in this way up so that the sponge faces the charcoal and that pad is there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pour some of the charcoal into here and hopefully I can do that alright. So let me try and set the camera up to do that. Right, hopefully that's visible enough. So what we're going to do is open this bag and pour in the charcoal granules. Now these are fairly chunky ones because they were cheap ones. I think the smaller granules you go for the more expensive they are. Now it's probably possible to actually crush these somehow like with a pestle and mortar or whatever or a coffee grinder and make them more into an actual charcoal powder but for what I want this should work well enough. So let's just flatten those out. Right, I don't know if that's going to be enough or if that's going to work, but let me pop the filter back together now. Just crush those down to make them a bit more even. Now I might actually have to put more in there so the filter holds itself together better. But that might work, so we're going to test it like this. So hopefully you can now see that that's filled with charcoal again, there's a bit of dead space in there. Actually I think I'm just going to stop the camera I'm just going to pop a little bit more in there to try and get a bit more flush. Then when I finish micromanaging that um, filter back together, uh, we'll test it. Okay, so the filter is refilled, hopefully to a decent standard, and let's hope it works. So I'm going to put on the TF1. If it works on the TF1 when I do the banana oil test, I'm then going to test it on the GP5 because this means that there's a safe alternative to GP5 filters that are super cheap if you just want one for basic, very basic particulate protection and vapour protection. Right, let's check it fair tight. As well as I can check it anyway, there's still on it. Uh, oh, it's blocked with bloody XM valve again in this mask. Let's try and manipulate that open. This is the big design flaw with TF1, it seems that the out uh, valve doesn't actually work properly like I had the problem with before. So now I'm going to have to finger the mask until it decides it wants to open for me. And then I can actually exhale through the valve that's meant to be in the mask for it to work. So yeah, GP5s have better exhale valves than the Chinese equivalent. There we go, it's working now. Right, so, let's give this thing a test. Now I can still smell that, so I think the granules are too big, um, unfortunately. They didn't work with the original Chinese filter, and they don't work now, I've refilled it. So, um, what I am going to have to do is find some way of crushing that charcoal into a finer powder, I think. That might be more of the problem. Uh, either that or the charcoal in that bag is long since expired, but I bought it new from the company that supplies updated charcoal, so I kind of doubt that. So, um, right, let's uh, have an attempt somehow at crushing the inside of that filter down, then I'll resume the video if I manage to successfully do that.
Right, this has been an absolute nightmare. What I've had to do is, because my coffee grinder's gone missing and I can't find pestle and mortar either, I've had to try and do this in a jug by using my multi-tool to smash it and then use the pliers to crush it into powder. I've basically succeeded at that, so you might be able to see through there it's actually a lot more of a powder now. So I really hope this works. Um, if this doesn't work, and then when I eventually find a coffee grinder, I'll do it again doing that, but this has been a real pain. I was hoping I could just pour this stuff into the um, filter and it would work. But I guess because the filter volume is quite small, you need it to be kind of 100% done, you know, for it to work. So, let's get the mask on. hope the exhale valve works this time. This is the face of a man who just inhaled a load of charcoal dust. <laughs> a load got in my eye, uh, quite a bit in my mouth. That's fine, you can spit that out a bit on there. Um, turns out I've crushed it too efficiently and the Chinese particulate filter inside is awful. So now it looks like I'm going to have to improve this filter again by cutting a P3 filter pad into the right shape to get it to work. But as far as I'm concerned, these are absolute junk, these refillable filters. Um, you know, it obviously works a lot best when you machine a filter in a factory. Uh, I can't see loads of charcoal dust in the mask. The exhale valve failed again on the TF1. Um, but yeah. What I am going to have to do is put another pad in here. Which, you know what, I'm feeling masochistic. Let's, let me cut a P3 pad out now. Um, I'm going to put that in the top of the filter. And then we will finally see if it works. Right, here goes nothing, I'm not looking forward to this. So, it's crushed into a dust as you can see, there's a P3 filter on this side. I hope this all fits well enough and it works, because I have no idea of the tolerances and everything else, if I'm still going to get a load of charcoal dust in my face from doing this. I better give the exhale valve a quick pushing in, so it actually might hopefully work. Here we go. Now, if there's charcoal coming through, there's only a very tiny amount, so let's go and test it with the ice acetone. And I hope after all this it works. Right, I can smell that, but it's very, very faint. So, in theory, the idea works, as we all knew in theory it should do. However, I don't think these little filters are worth the effort for several reasons, and I'll just go into that now. Let's get this off. And ah, my eye, it burns, there's even more fresh charcoal on my face, so... The P3 pad isn't seated properly, it's nowhere near as good as when I did it in the Soviet tube. Because when you do that, it's actually pushed in like a washer on this, it's not. But anyway, right, let me explain why this doesn't work very well, this tiny filter concept anyway. When you have an actual, I'll just get one to show you. When you have an actual CBRN filter, this entire segment here is filled with charcoal, much, much bigger than the little filter. When you have a very big segment filled with charcoal, there's obviously a lot more charcoal for the smelly stuff to go through, all the vapours to go through to actually get stuck to the charcoal. So the bigger the filter, the more charcoal it's in it, the more efficiently the filter works. When you have a little tiny filter like this, it doesn't work very well. By default, when the Chinese make these, they put quite big granules of charcoal in, which, um, designed obviously so you don't need good particulate filters at either end to contain the charcoal, you can already see that's changing colour. The issue is when you have big granules of charcoal it's even le less efficient at you know stuff absorbing to the charcoal as it moves through it because uh, activated charcoal works better as a powder or very small granules not big granules as we found out in this video. Um, so the issue is that these filters basically can't work very well by design. Uh, I don't think mine being expired was the reason it didn't work now. I think it's just by concept of design, you know, these are almost useless filters. Um, and once they are refilled, uh, you kind of have problems. You can refill it and have a very inefficient filter, or you can refill it and make it efficient, like I've done now, by grinding up the charcoal, so I can barely smell the isomal acetate. But the filter size is too small, and I can't get the P3 pad seated in there very well. Um, to actually do it. Actually, I'm going to do one more last crazy thing. I'm going to get my P3 pad from the other videos and stick it in there in the actual mask intake and then hopefully it will work. Let me just quickly try that. Right, this seems to be working. With two P3 filters in now. Let's try this up here.
Yeah, very, very faint smell of isomer acetate. So as I said, these filters aren't big enough to do the job properly. But in theory it works. So what I've done, because I think the camera cut off last time I was recording this, P3 filter in there, obviously P3 filter in the end of there, that's done a good enough job now of actually plugging the um, mask, but um, yeah. These are not good filters simply because they are not big enough by volume uh, to actually block vapour coming through and the particle layer inside that comes with it is so shoddy that when you have charcoal at a working size it won't do anything. Right, now I'm going to clean my face up and probably rinse my eyes out and clean my hands because I'm covered in coal dust and we have learned that these filters are useless and not to bother with them.